tried to better myself. So in, in, in uh, elementary, I was playing basketball and football and doing track. Then in middle school, I was doing the same, and in high school. So luckily, Hale Harris is uh, 32 miles south of here. So luckily, Alcorn State University and three or four other universities wanted, wanted me. And uh, the coach at Alcorn told me that he'll make me a better player than any other <coughs> university. And it's about 85 miles from home, so I wanted to get away from home and I experience something different. So I went to Alcorn, I quit, went back home. Mama called the coach, told me, hey, come get him, eating too much cereal and biscuits, come get him. <laughs> so he came back and got me, and uh, I stayed at Alcorn for four years, I was a four-time All-American. Wow. Uh, I got drafted to the New York Jets in 1976. I played one year with Joe Namath. Lou Holtz was my first professional coach. And he always called me Larry. I said, Coach is large. He's from Larry to me. <laughs> I was angry because I thought I was the first rounder. Old time All American, broke several records. But I thought I don't get that money. I did not go first round, seven, third, four, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Didn't go. 11 round. They got me. Gave me $3,000 for signing the paper. <laughs> if you make the team, you'll get $30,000. I was at 30, you still got to pay your taxi, you got to pay for your place to live, you got to get you some reasonable transportation. So when I made got drafted to the Jets, I went there with an attitude, y'all. I went, I went there <coughs> knowing that. I'm just as good as anybody else out there. It don't matter because I'm from Mississippi, from a small town in Mississippi. I'm just as good as one of those guys from USC, or, 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 or from Notre Dame or something. I'm just as good. So my mission was to, I'm going to prove it to them. Everybody go, go up against them. I'm going to them. I'm going to whoop them because I know I'm just as good. So when I made it to the Jets, they drafted me as an outside linebacker. I made the eating them potatoes and stuff at all going that game by 10 pounds, and they put me down as a defensive end. I made it to the Jets, and I was going, some to, going against some of the first round of them, and I whooped. <laughs> so I started my rookie year with the Jets as, I, as, as a left defensive end. But they still didn't give me that money, which I was mad. So I kept playing with the Jets, and next year I left and came back. They still would not give me my next year contract. They maybe had about five or ten more thousand to it. And I did not have none of those incentives that you make all American, all whatever. Well, none of that was in my contract. <coughs> so those four years with Jets, I'm whooping tail and everything. And my fourth year, we played the San Francisco 49ers. Um, in, in uh, Hempstead, New York, we played at Shea Stadium, we played 49 49ers. 49ers came and whooped us during that process, the defensive end with the 49ers. Got his knee messed up. Mark Gassinaw was playing behind me with the Jets. So after Dwayne Boyle got his knee messed up, I became expendable. Being expendable, you can be all what you want to be. But we got somebody else behind you. We want, we want them to come in. So you got to go. You ain't got no say so. You got to go. Tears came in my eyes. I made it here. I took a position. I, I, you know, I beat everybody, everything. I, I'm, I'm starting. I'm leading the team and, and sacking the quarterbacks and everything. I got to go. So I said, and I said, now nah, I'm going over in, 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 in San Francisco. And back in the days, in 1980, where they, they were saying some things about San Francisco. <laughs> Since we got kids here, I was going to say, but they were saying some things about San Francisco. So now I'm going to San Francisco. But... <laughs> so when I make it to San Francisco, they had my name up over a locker. When 
And I walked here, they went to that, no, we just whooped your butt. So you coming back here now, would you bring your bed up over here to us, or we just whoop you? I said, okay. I looked over there. Joe Montana was at his locker. His name had never been thought of yet. Steve DeBerger was starting quarterback for the 49ers. Wow. The second game with the 49ers, DeBerger called Longitis. Joe Montana started. Bill Walsh first year. So moving on, um, we start playing. We start playing. We start playing. We start winning. You know, all these, then by that time, the 49 got a uh, friend, then he came in a couple more different lines, and they put all around us. We, we all came together as one. So, um, having a good season, we need to beat Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs <coughs> to go to the Super Bowl. We went to Dallas. Uh, the year before, a uh, game before Dallas had came to San Francisco and really whooped our tail. But in this playoff game, if we beat Dallas, we go to the Super Bowl. So during the playoff game, anyway, the air not being in my show, something about 1981 or 1980, by Dwight Clark made the big catch in the end zone. Okay. After Dwight made the big, big catch, uh, 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 I got Ray Washington kicks the field goal. Dallas get the ball. Then the White marches back down the field. Oh, he marching, he throwing some passes here. Run a lot, hit one guy, knock him out. But anyway, Dennis White came watching, they get need about 10 more yards. They can't feel going to beat us when we're going to go to the Super Bowl. So Dennis came back out of the pocket. He dropped back for, for throw another pass. Number 65 broke through there and hit Dennis White and made the phone. <laughs> I was number 65. Yeah. I made the phone. <laughs> we. Went to the Super Bowl on that mission. Played the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals had big Pete Johnson up and running back. We had the goal line stand. So anyway, we won Super Bowl 16. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Also, Super Bowl 16, my ring in 1981 became the world's largest Super Bowl ring, size 22, so it was in the Guinness Book of World's Records. Holy cow. <laughs> so, so after that, we kept on playing. We had to strike in a way to I'm moving on a little fast. After the strike, a couple more years, we go back to the playoffs again. We played the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. That we lost that, to that team, but the rest of the team we won, we beat everybody. So we played the Miami Dolphins in 1984 at Stanford. Danny White hadn't been sacked the whole season, except in the first two plays. Right. Super Bowl 19. Wow. After my football career, I moved around. Well, my wife and I, we opened up a business in Florida. Um, and we decided to come back to Mississippi about three years ago. And luckily, some way, somehow, you know God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. you, you know, a lot of times we wonder how or why, but it ain't for us to know how or why. Lorraine came into my life. I had been to the point that I was aching, I could not sleep on my side. Prior to that, I was getting, every six months I've been steroid shots. Everybody would turn, they turn to little beans or something after something I would get sterile. Oh man, I, I, I couldn't move. Talk to Lil Ray. <clears throat> Eventually I talked to Dr. Watt. Who are? <laughs> I said, man, I, I, I'm looking down at us, Doc. I can't, I can't lay on my shoulder. I, I, he doesn't look at me. I'm looking down. <laughs> I said, Doc, I can't lay on my shoulders or nothing. I'm tired of getting shot. What can you do? Like I said, y'all, I've been around the world and I've heard so many things people say they can do for you. You know, you get to the point when somebody opens their mouth, they say they won't do something for you, you want to do it. You want to walk away. So I started about 20 years ago. 
gave me the product, told me get this product, get this product, get this product. For a while, that product sat on the shelf. <coughs> you know, we as humans, <laughs> we stuck on the shelf. <laughs> so it stayed on the shelf out there, and I was doing a lot of exercise. So I was doing the rebound. Wonderful. And being type 2 diabetic, you didn't want to get rid of them because it's all sugar. Yep. So I started doing the rebound, getting my energy back. Uh, instead of me cramping so much, I stopped cramping that much. I said, okay. I said, now, what is this other stuff over here? Oh, <laughs> God told me to try that down. Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, when you, if something gets nasty, you really got to work your way off into it. Man, nasty. <laughs> so I started mixing a few of this juices and stuff with it, with this uh, FX. Start mixing it. I put a little palm juice, a little white plant peach juice. If I'm going to do it, I got to do it my way. I got to mix it. Start mixing it. Every morning when I usually go walking, that old left ankle, it would take about a mile for it to warm up. I'm going to walk it. <laughs> Until it warm up, then I start. Well, kept drinking my little FX. One night I laid in the bed. Usually when I lay in the bed, I got to prop this arm up on the bed post. Other than that, I don't want this hurt. I still lay in the bed, I didn't have to prop that arm up. I was a baby. One. Baby. One. I said, I'm going to lay on my arm a little bit. She said, you just want to take it. I'm going to lay on my arm. Now, since I've been doing it for about a year, I am 65, so I'm going to be 66. I have no pain. No pain. <laughs> I can lay it on. I can hold them to the side. I usually can do that. Look at it go. I can do that. So whatever, if you're going through some pain, or if you know somebody going through some pain, it's got to be a way. I called Lorraine about a month ago. And I'm telling you, somebody said, look at God. And uh, I went up to San Francisco to be with Dwight Florida. Dwight is in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. They feed him through a tube. His hands are like this. So I called him, I said, what, what can we do for since they feed them to a tube, some of the, the stuff that we got, them shake them, mix it up, and she's going to the tube, go into the tube. You know, I mean, I'm being honest. Sure. And Lisa least won't mess with the taste, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You know, so, I, I'm, they called, 49ers called me the other day, Mr. Wallow, the, you, the owner of the team, really is. Well, he was the owner when I was there. They, uh, Dwight moved about a mile from Mr. Barlow and uh, my dad. So they said, well, Orange, we got that food there. We're going to send you a fifth round ticket, come over here where the moves is. And so God carried me back to Dwight again. So I just got to find a way. Because I'm quite sure people don't put him in nothing, try it, some of everything. They said, whatever the doctor got, it, whatever is going on. But I'm trying to find a way, what can I do? Well, how is there a way that I can put my brother on somewhere? Because I want him to be able, he might not be able to walk, but his health will get better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he can live as long, young life. So Lord, right now, I'm gonna need your help. I'll go with him, <laughs> I'll go with him the next two weeks, back up there. Yeah. So, anybody, if y'all, <laughs> Because if I touch him, I'm touching the owner. He can touch the team. He can touch family. That's my goal. Again, I'm Lawrence Village. If you all can use me, if possible, use me. On to 
to better everyone. We need to help each other. Thank you. Beautiful, Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence Pillars.